Corporal Melvin Kaminsky, 12233183. That was my serial number. It means I'm an enlisted. But I enlisted, I enlisted to go to college, not to, not to be, you know, in foxholes and be shot at. But listen, that's what happens in a war. Being a kid of 17, 18, I was a peacenik, I was against war, but I knew what Hitler was doing to Jews, so. I really did feel that this was a proper and just war, and a war that should be fought. My mother had four stars in her window. I think the limit was three of your children in the army. That is, I think I could have gotten out of it, but I was gung-ho to be a soldier. My brother Lenny was an engineer gunner on a B-17. And in his 35th or 36th mission, his flying fortress, B-17, was hit and they all bailed out. And he landed in Austria. He knew he had an H and he had heard rumors that the Germans were taking Jewish troops and sending them to concentration camps. So on the way down, while he was still in his parachute, he ripped it off. The service always felt that the Jewish people were book people, office people. And they asked me, how on earth did you wind up in the infantry on the front lines? You're Jewish. I said, because I wanted to be there. One time, my wife and I invited some of the fellows from the camp to our little apartment to have dinner. So the bell rang and one of the soldiers already there opened up and said, oh, come on in. Oh, by the way, I want you to meet Jew boy's wife. That's the way my wife was introduced to all these men. That was my name in the barracks. Hey, Jew boy, not Cone, like the rest of the men were called but Jew boy. I was born in, in Munich, and I grew up in Munich. In March 33, the Nazi had been in power for about six weeks, and there was a general boycott of Jews. Most Jewish stores were closed, and things, things were very bad. I was 16 years old, I was kicked out of school. All the Jewish kids were kicked out. So my father found some very, very distant relatives who brought me over to America. I came here in 1936, and in January 42, I was drafted. And of course, I felt I wanted to do it, to fight the Nazis. But I do remember, in the beginning, we had no idea which way the war would go, and it looked like uh, the Germans would, would win the war. My first basic training was in Camp Crowder, Missouri. In the camp, there was one of these anti-Semitic blondies from Texas, or no. Louisiana. I remember this night we went to bed and across the barracks I hear this voice, Rana, Rana. Yes. And he said, uh, Rana, you a Jew, J E W U E W, you a Jew. I says, Yes, as a matter of fact, why do you ask? <laughs> and then for the strange thing he said, I'm from Louisiana. You know a Jew named Goldfarb? He figured all Jews knew each other. I says, no, there are many Jews I don't know. You don't know Goldfarb? I said, no. He says, well, you're not a bad guy. That was the last thing he said. <laughs> and that was it. The National Broadcasting Company brings you now a special broadcast of historic significance with the first Jewish religious service broadcast from Germany since the advent of Hitler. I was more or less an assistant to the uh, Catholic chaplain because we didn't have a Jewish chaplain. They asked me to conduct services in Aachen, Germany. It was broadcast from coast to coast here in the United States. Think about it. I get sad too, you know. There's a service that we have, what they call Yiska service, you know. Yiska means remembering. When I looked out and I saw so many Jewish GIs, every one of them, there wasn't one GI there that 
didn't have a family in Europe somewhere. I had an extended family there. They all, uh, they all perished. I was born February the 3rd, 1910. So I'm 104. And when I was 10 years old, we came to America from Romania. When the war started, I wanted to go into the service. If you're an American, you go in to help your country. That's why. They recommended that I go overseas. In England, there are a lot of Jewish children. We call them orphans because the parents sent them out into the country to keep them safe from the bombing in London. So we gave them a party. We collected all the food we could get from the base, and they loved it. The Jews did their part. They'll never forget it. Well, I would you know, seen all the, the footage of what the Nazis were doing in you know, Kristallnacht. So I signed up. They wouldn't take me without my parents' signature because I wasn't 21. So I got my father to sign. I was on the destroyer Lansdale because the executive officer, we got hit by an aerial torpedo. They hit three of the ships in the convoy. One of them was the Paul Hamilton. It had 580 men aboard and went up without a single survivor. But we were sunk also. And the Lansdale had broken half after about 15 minutes. Fortunately for us, two Coast Guard manned ships picked up survivors. So we were lucky. We came back and they asked us if we wanted to go back to sea on a new destroyer. And I said yes. I volunteered in the Army Air Corps as a cadet aviator. When I was in training, one of my friends, one bombardier, was Archie Stein. His name sounded Jewish, and they picked on him. He happened to be a Lutheran from Macon, Minnesota, and he was my best friend, and unfortunately he was killed in action in August of 1944. Freedom isn't free. It takes a lot of people to put their lives on the line. And as far as I'm concerned, the real heroes are in the cemeteries all over the world. As Americans and as Jews, we are protecting liberty, and we know as a minority what it is to be in this country. It's a wonderful country. <laughs>